Hey there. This is going to be a quick demonstration of just how to build for Xcode, so building to iOS devices. I will show you the process for building from a Mac directly, as well as building on a Windows device and then bringing that Xcode project over to a Mac and processing it from there. And just the, the little niggles that you might uh, come across during the process. So I've got a very basic project over here, um, just to demonstrate running on a device, you just spin the cube, that's all there is to it, and we're going to use this to build to our device. I'm going to start off with a making sure that our build target is set to iOS. In Mac it's not going to give you the option to build an Xcode project, it seems. Um, you just need to select the correct version of Xcode that you want to use. When it comes to building iOS, it, um, it is a bit finicky in that you need the latest Xcode and often that means then also updating your Mac OS version. So I've got a very recent version of Xcode and I have upgraded the Mac recently. I'm going to go and build that out. Put that into, let's put it into a build folder here. Choose that. and let that build out for a second. Now that that's finished building, we've got our build folder over here and it will generate an Xcode project. So we can just open up that Xcode project. Xcode might take a second to open. And once it does, carry on. In the meantime, you can also plug in your device. You always have to run it on a device first, check that it's actually working and then we'll look at the process of submitting it. So when you plug in your device, uh, it might ask you, do you want to trust this computer? Then yes, trust it, give it your passcode. And it should then show up over here instead of this any iOS device. It might also say that you have a mismatching version of iOS running on your device versus the version that Xcode is supporting here, in which case you'll need to update one or the other here. But in this case, I can select my iPhone and then if you haven't used uh, Xcode before, you want to select the main root project up here and this will then give you all the settings that we need to just go through quickly. Um, as you start adding more advanced things to your project like um, in-app purchases or using Google Firebase um, or ads, anything um, other than the base Unity that uses uh, external services. Then there may be other frameworks that you need to add in here, like when you're using Google um, Firebase stuff or any of the, the Firebase uh, applications, because there's like six of them, then that uses a process um, or a service called CocoaPods or software called CocoaPods. And CocoaPods is then responsible for patching the Xcode project before you open it in Xcode. So with that, there's an additional step of running in your build folder, running CocoaPods to just run through everything and patch certain files, and then it should run just fine in here. So just be aware that there are other services or frameworks that may, be, um, may require additional steps to get working uh, with Xcode and building it to your device. But if you just read the console, when you try to run it, it should give you all of the information. Right, so on the front page here, we've just got a basic display name, bundle identifier, version, build number, etc. Uh, all of this content over here is what comes from Unity in the player settings. Um, then, I mean, you can go and change these if you want to, um, but rather go and change it in the Unity player settings so that you don't have to change it every time here. Then under the signing and capabilities, um, if you are going to be submitting this to the store and not just running it on your device, then you do obviously need a developer site, uh, certificate. Um, but Xcode will take care of signing and managing the certificates of all of that for you with this little uh, automatically managed signing team here. If you're signed in with your own account, you can just say personal team. Because it's a personal team, it's not going to let you submit this to the store, but you'll be able to test on your device, luckily. When you are ready to then submit to the store, you can then go and get the developer license and then you should be good to go. Okay, so we're just going to run that, click the little play button. That's going to compile the project and upload it to the device if there are no build issues. 
While that's building, let me talk about, about the process of building or running the Exco project if you built it on a Windows machine. So if you did build it on a Windows machine, you'll also get this entire um, Xcode project folder structure. So you might want to then zip that up, bring that across into a Mac. If you don't have permanent access to a Mac, then you just need to find one when it's time to actually build. So you'll bring across the Xcode project that is built in Windows, unzip it somewhere, put it wherever. And then the next step is to mark everything as executable. If you go and open this Xcode project, if it was built in Windows, right? And you press the play button. What you're going to get is an error where it says that it doesn't have the required permissions or it's not able to execute a certain file. You should be able to just go and right click on the folder where the build is and say new terminal at folder. If you don't have that option, then I will show you quickly how to CD to that. Okay, so over here we've got the folder that we opened directly, right? You can see that it says build administrator. Administrator is obviously my user. Build is the folder that I'm currently in. But if I were not in the build folder, you can see I'm just in C1, right? I could type in ls to list the folders and files that are in the current directory. I can use cd to change directory. So I wanted to cd into, where did I put it up? I believe I put it into documents then it is in github presso then it's in projects build and that is the folder i want to be in so i'm going to click enter right now i'm in the build folder if i ls you can see all the same files that are in the folder there that's exactly where i need to be right so the next step once you are inside that folder Remember, this is when we are taking the Windows built Xcode project, bringing it to a Mac, and then we need to make all the files inside of that project executable so that you can run in Xcode correctly. So to then change the permissions to be executable, we're going to use the sudo um, keyword over here, sudo chmod. We're going to um, adjust the permissions. So chmod is uh, permissions. We're going to add executable, so plus X, that adds executable to it. And we are going to do it to everything. So star asterisk, it's a wildcard basically. So everything inside of this particular folder will then be marked as executable. And we're just going to hit the enter button. And it's going to ask you for a password. I'm actually just not going to put in that password because I'm going to interrupt my build probably. But that's the process. You just have to mark it as executable and you're good to go. Okay, now we have it running on device. I can spin my cube. Here we go. Okay, working. Um, you'll want to also make sure that any logs, excessive logs like this one here, in particular um, about the gyro information, you might want to just go and uh, comment those out so that you don't have these kind of logs because they do create a lot of CPU overhead. Um, so now that it is running successfully, we can call it a day. Our uh, application is ready to submit, right? Now, remember the other steps that I did mention about it um, having, you having to have a developer license. So once you do have your developer license, go over and change to that. Okay, so now that that is ready for signing, that's good to go. Um, next thing I want to do when I'm ready to submit to the store is I want to create an archive for it. I want to go product and archive. Right, now the archive has finished being processed. You can see over here we have the first archive build over here. The next step to getting it onto the store would be then to distribute the app, go through App Store Connect, upload the app directly to the App Store, I'm not going to do this, but the rest of the steps are quite um, easy to follow. You just want to upload it to the store and then on the App Store Connect um, website, you can go and find your build there once it's been processed and submitted for review. That's it. That is the process for building and testing to iOS.